This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. Hey, Coach. Uh, just curious about the, the progress of Max Fletcher, first of all. Um, God got a big leg, but he was inconsistent last year. Has he made progress in that regard? And what are your thoughts on him? I think so. He had a really good spring, uh, really, really good summer. We did a lot of charting in the summer as well. I was really proud of him there. Today was our first day to punt live. I think I was three punts. He hit what I call an A ball. Second ball is a B ball, you know, so two or three were pretty decent balls. But I, I think he's heading in the right direction. You know, when I when I was um when I was at Georgia, Jake Kamar was a punt we had there. And Jake was a really good talent coming out, very much like Max. But um he his first year at Georgia, he had an okay season, but his second year he was just off the charts. So I, I I'm hoping to see Max do the same. I think that first year as a punt was a really tough, tough task. Looking at kickoff, man, um, you typically had somebody else you know, kicking off sides cam. Who's in contention for that now? I think, uh, you know, I think we're in a good spot. Cam, Cam's had a really good um, spring, summer, and I think the start of fall count has been good. Uh, we also have De Devin Bell that transferred here. We come in this spring, I think, has a real shot. And then Blake Ford's another guy that's been on the team for a while. And, uh, I think all three of those guys are going to have a real opportunity. I've been pleased where they're at. Uh, you know, we, we've been blessed here. We had, uh, you know, Vito here. We had uh, Bates here the last, last few years. That's made a big difference. But uh, I feel really good about those three guys. Which, whichever one's on the field, I think they can all do a great job for us. In your brothers, would you rather have somebody besides Cam? Kick off just since he's already had field goals and three feet. Yeah, you know, honestly, I, I have no preference on that. I, I think when a kid's a freshman, to be able to come in and kick field goals and then take those responsibilities is better. But I, I have no problem with it. I don't think it, it uh, you know, dictates your performance one way or the other with field goal. I think when you get in the world of field goal, kickoffs, and punting, I think you got to be real careful there. But Cam, I mean, he's been so good for these first two years with accuracy and distance. And, you know, how can he get better? Do you feel like he is better? And if so, how, in what way? Yeah, I, I think, you know, what we've talked about from day one, let's be at 80% or better. And he's done that the last two years. I think he's around 83% in two years. But, you know, this year we'd love to get up, hit that number of 90. I think if you ever can get in the number of 90, then you can talk about having some opportunity for awards at the end of the season. But what I like about Cam, particularly last year, you know, we missed a field goal at uh, Texas A&M, and then he came right back and just got on a streak of about, I think, six or seven field goals in a row. That's what he brings to the table. He's a very uh, – strong-minded young man, and I, I like the way the way he approaches the game. Uh, special teams, often a good time to see freshmen pop. Any freshmen sticking out yeah. to you? You know, right now we're really looking for what we call our role players, our core players, and our 70th man. So kind of definitely look at the freshmen, but the ro role players for us are guys that may start on offense or defense, and then we like to get them on teams for one or two units. And then, then you start looking at the core players. You want guys that – you know, they may go, they might play 18 to 20 snaps on offense and defense, and then maybe you can get them on three or four units. And our 70th man, if y'all remember two years ago, we had a uh, Nick that was on our team as a shield for us. And that's kind of a guy that, you know, his role is only special teams. And, and he started for us on three units that year. So that's kind of how we're breaking it down. And uh, But we're really excited about the freshmen, the transfers, and stuff that we have on the team. Um, from the self scout of last year, what were your areas of needed improvement in special teams across the board? Self scout. I, first of all, kickoff return. You know, kickoff return in college football today has really turned into a deal where you don't want to hurt your football team. Number one. So I, I kind of my, been my approach the last two years. If we're like a like the Ole Miss game two years ago, 52, 51, whatnot. You know, as the game went along, I said we just need to get the ball in twenty five and help a football team. But but on the on the second second hand, we've done a lot of studying with KO artists all season and we want to be more productive there with the opportunities we get. And we'd like to take a you know a few more opportunities than, than what we've done in the past. But, um, you can certainly sit back there and fair catch them all day with that rule, but we feel like we got some guys that have a chance to change the game. And a big, big part of um, you know, talking about the scout report this all season is we, we want to, you know, we, we did a breakdown. We felt like when we won the field position battle on special teams, so our offense was getting in a better position, our defense was as well, that we won 75% of the games. So that's something we're going to be real conscious of this year to try to help our, our, our football team 
with a punt return unit, a kickoff return unit, et cetera. But how I think you affect the game more than any other unit, obviously, is punt and punt return. It seems to us that there's a little more depth at positions across the board. And I'm wondering if, if that factors into you that you see, like, backup linebackers and backup safeties guys that come to you more often if you're seeing maybe an uptick in athleticism, speed, and all that. Yes, sir. we certainly have uh, more talent than we've ever had on the team since, since I've been here. So, you know, in the past, we kind of pieced things together at times. And this year, I, I feel like we really got some good players. And of course, we're, we're, we picked up a couple more guys this summer, so we're still evaluating those as well. But I really like, you know, who we're at with our depth, especially, especially at the linebacker spot and at the skill spot at the uh, defensive back position. Maybe go over the – Top candidates, um, Satania, uh, Stevens, and all for punt return, kickoff yeah. return. I, I feel like punt return, uh, leaving spring, obviously, uh, Bryce Stevens. Uh, Jalen Braxton's a freshman that moved in. I really like him. He's a very fast kid, a uh, bigger size kid, and also uh, Isaiah Satega as well. I, I think all three of those guys have, have a chance for us back there, and we'll just kind of see how it plays out. Uh, when you, If you move over to the kick return spot, you know, obviously we have A.J. back, but I, I really like uh, – uh, Isaiah Satanga as well. He's a very good return in high school. He he played uh, over here at February High. My son's had a chance to watch him play quite a bit. So, uh, but but there's also some other guys we're looking at. But it, go, it goes back to what you said earlier. I think there's going to be a few more options this year to choose from. When you put something on maybe Eli, like the background on how you guys got him. He's a what up north Wisconsin or something. Yeah, yeah. So so Eli Stein is a long snapper that's uh, from Wisconsin. His dad actually played at Wisconsin. He was a D lineman that converted to a long snapper. And uh, I, I had Eli – what I try to do is win knee, like a real need for a snapper. I'm going to try to bring in early in the summer, get him up here to camp. And it just so happened the first guy we brought in had made a stop at a school, and he actually got offered and committed that day. So that guy was out, obviously, never made it here. And then Eli came in the next day, and obviously we loved the way he ran. We loved the way he snapped. And uh, that's really, you know, I have to try to scour the country and get the best guys we can. We're always going to look in-state and the surrounding areas first, but then we just try to go around the country and find, find that best best player we can find. Cam only had 16, I think 16 field goal tries last year. It seemed like there was a lot of opt-in to go for it when you were in the red zone last yeah. year. I know that's not your call, but um, for guys as accurate as him, you yeah. think – Maybe it makes more sense to, to give him more opportunity. Yeah, I'm all for it. I know Cam is as well. But I will say so much with how your season's going on offense and defense and how the flow of the game's going dictates that, you know. But obviously that's never my call. But I'd certainly like to see us. I think Coach Pittman's talked a little bit more about trying to do that this year. You mentioned uh, taking opportunities on kickoff return. I mean, when you look at, like, going back to 2010, they outlawed wedge blocking, 2012 – they moved it from the 30 to the 35 to have more kickoffs going in zone. Then the last rule was the fair catch deal, so you can get it at the 25. Um, AJ averaged like 15.6, I think, yards uh, return last year. What so What is it about that that you think you need to take more opportunities when everything's been done to kind of discourage it more? Yeah, I think, you know, I think they, they've done the discouragement of the rules, really been take the concussions out of it, which I think is a very good thing. But I think also – it's like Pittman went to a staff meeting the other day. You know, starting at the 26 and a half is so much better than starting at the 25-yard line. And I also think that, you know, when, when you look at numbers, like a kick, a kickoff, we've been really good because we have a great kickoff guy, right? So you start looking at numbers on kickoff, and, I mean, guys, I think last year we had 77 kickoffs, 70 of them were touchbacks, and seven that that, that were not. But when you look at stats, when you start looking at stats, particularly on kickoff coverage, you know, um, that doesn't play well in your favor. You're always getting a 25 yard return. Does that make sense? So we, we want to try to do things to, to boost that up, you know. But at the same time, I think it's been a really good rule. And I think we got to be smart, but we got to use it to our advantage. From a recruiting standpoint, how do you think things are, are going this year? And, um, I think you're, people probably don't know you're viewed as one of the top recruiters in the class and just, uh, what's your approach? What do, what do you think separates you, I guess, from well, other I mean, recruiters? I think we have a lot of good recruiters on our staff. And I, mean, I, I uh, for, for me, I just try to – I really have always worked from who I am, just try to be a good friend to somebody and talk life lessons with them. And, you know, I, I recruit a lot of different areas, but my main – I really have tried to focus in Alabama the last two years because that's where I'm from. But 
we all also have a, a lot of a lot of years of recruiting from Orlando to West Palm, you know, and that's kind of where Rocket Sanders comes into play. And we don't go down and get a lot of guys, but we just try to pick up a guy if we that, that matches us and we have interest in coming here to Arkansas. But I just think be who you are, you know, that's the biggest thing that can make you a good recruiter. I just think I know Eli hurt his finger at the end of last year. Mm-hmm. Um, just I just think his freshman year went overall. I think it went really well. You know, we're in camp last year. I remember calling Eli in. I go, hey, Eli, you know, I just – you're not communicating with our players. Like, you're not talking to our specials. You're just a real quiet kid by nature. But I encourage him to start having conversations with those guys. And Cam, Cam I thought, was very good with that, having those conversations with him. And because, you know, as a young guy, you don't really understand what's going on exactly until you got to snap your first snap in the game. But I like the way he responded. You know, and I'm from the South, he's from the North, so you're kind of completely different people, but he comes from a really good home. I think that has a lot to do with his success. And of course, obviously his dad stopped me in college as well. I can't think of any bad snaps he had. I mean, they always say about the great thing about a deep snapper is if you don't notice him, he's probably doing a good no, job. No, if you're not saying his name, I'm pretty happy. If you're saying his name, we got problems. So, unless he's making a tackle. When Eli did make two tackles last year, I was proud of him, two solo tackles. And then is Max, I guess, is he your, your number one holder now with Reed gone? Or yeah, Ma- Max, so it's kind of a story with these holders. It seems to happen every year. But every time we take a punt, we say, hey, you got to learn how to hold. Nobody wants him to hold. So Max last year, we, we were in camp, and no, everybody avoided Max like to play because he couldn't hold. He, he was learning, right? So, but that evolved into, 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 into he was snapping in the bowl game last year. And Cam said he's one of the best he's ever had. So, I don't know if he's doing that to boost his confidence or he feels that way, but I still think that, that, that's just Max working at his trade. Reed Bowers, same deal about three years ago. Nobody wanted him, and he worked his trade and got pretty good at it. And then who – I know it's probably a little technical. Who would be your number two holder somewhere? Right, right now, probably Devin Bale. He's done a good job. He held a little bit in, uh, at his previous institution. And then reading up on Larko, man, that guy does it all. It's pretty good numbers, kind of. Yeah. Uh, what's the story on him getting here, and, and where could he play, play into the mix? So so we always try to be three deep at kicker, punter, and long snapper. I know initially in your mind, you go, wow, why do you need that many guys? Well, you go go through a season, right, and our guy, our one and two guy will always kick on Tuesday, Thursday, game day. Well, Monday and Wednesday, you need somebody kicking and punting to your return units, kickoff return, punt return. So that's where they can take a load off. Instead of camp kicking Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you can go three days a week. I really try to, to – that's why I'm going to do that. But where does Larco fit in? Lar- Larco did some really good things at uh, UT Martin. And what I like probably best about him was he, he kicked against Tennessee at Tennessee. So, he'd been in a big game. So, I wanted to bring in a guy that had been in some games, that had done some good things that we could bring in here. You never know about Andrew. Eli got hurt last year. We never want that to happen. But when they go down, you just don't want to miss a beat. Like an Ole Miss game, do y'all remember any bad snaps? Eli went down about right after halftime. We brought in some other people, and we didn't miss a beat, right? So that's kind of what you're looking for at every position. Well, one more. Um, so the, the mechanics of, you know, Cam's been kicking. Eli's got been snapping. Max had – and he say he's held a little bit. But just how good do you feel about those that three-man, you know, team on field goals and exploits and stuff? Do you have to be in 3D? No, no, I mean, those three guys together. Yeah, yeah, yeah no. I think the more the more they're together, the, the better, better they become. And I, I think we see, we're see we seeing that. Man, we, we come into camp last summer, and we were rolling snappers. We're trying to see who's going to be the snapper. We're rolling them all the time. I know it's very frustrating for the holder and, and the kicker, particularly the kicker. But uh, And then then we settled in, and we just kind of stuck with our three guys through the year. But it's good. They, they went in the um, – They've been together all summer. I would say the bowl game, Eli was still out with injury. They had the summer, and the spring, summer, and then, of course, fall camp. I wanted to follow up on something you said a minute ago, and I think I understood what you meant, but you were talking about the touchback percentage. Mm-hmm. And it's seven of them were returned. Mm-hmm. So did your stats show that you were tackling inside the 25 on a lot of those? So the question you have is – The seven were returned? Yeah. Do you yeah. want to kick – down to the one and maybe try to pin people more. Is that what you Yeah, that's kind of what you talk about game plan wise. If they have a dynamic returner, obviously you want all touchbacks. If they have a guy that you feel like you can pin inside the 25, same thing. You know, it's all about field position battles. So we, we want to be able to, um, to to do that if we feel like our personnel. And we've had some years here where I, I didn't feel real good about personnel covering. So having a guy that could kick it out was really a big deal. But but obviously, there's so many things you can do on a kickoff to dictate field position if, if you're willing to do it. So, in other words, you'd be more willing to let, let's just don't go touchback, touchback. You'd be more willing to try 
for more pinning this year. Yeah, like you love to have a hang time, you know, four hang time, 10 to minus 10 to the goal line, let's say, and then get a chance to try to pin this out of 25. You'd love to be able to do that. Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use our promo code BELIEVE. That's B L E A V. For your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts.